Okay, this is a short tutorial on the work of Ignaz Semmelweis and Joseph Lister, whose work tackled the problem of infection in surgery. The problem of infection in surgery was so great because of the development of anaesthetics. Because ether had been discovered as a useful anaesthetic in 1846, surgeons started to attempt operations that they would not have done beforehand simply because the patient felt no pain and it, they were not writhing and, um, and convulsing with the sheer pain and agony of the operation on the, on the table. So that meant that surgeons took their time and attempted more adventurous operations but because they were taking more time it meant that the wounds created in surgery were open to the atmosphere and therefore open to infection for a longer period of time. Operations were still being carried out in unhygienic conditions, surgeons wore everyday clothes and instruments were not being sterilized between operations. So because of this high death rate and high rate of infection, this period of time between ether being discovered as an anaesthetic in 1846 and Louis Pasteur's discovery that germs caused infection in the 1870s, that period of time of dangerous, adventurous surgery was known as the black period of surgery. So in comes the work and the developments of Ignaz Semmelweis. He was a doctor that worked in Vienna and was particularly concerned about the high death rate of women after childbirth and the particular death rate of childbed fever or purpural fever as it, as it, as it is known. Um, many doctors believe that this disease was simply caught uh, or, or spread through miasmas or infected gases that were suspended in the air in hospital wards. But Semmelweis made a breakthrough when he, when his friend died. His friend was conducting a, was dissecting a dead body from a childbed fever victim, and he cut his finger, and a couple of days later died himself. Now Semmelweis took it upon himself to do the dissection and the post-mortem of his friend's body and he discovered that his friend had died of exactly the same disease as the victim he, he himself was dissecting at the time, childbed fever. So we came to the conclusion that doctors who were dissecting dead bodies of victims and then going to treat and examine existing live patients were spreading the disease on their hands. So he ordered that every doctor on the ward wash their hands in, a, in chloride, of, uh, chloride of lime before examining patients and the death rate fell dramatically. Now Semmelweis's story is told really well in two YouTube videos that were produced by the BBC. If you type in 06A hyphen surgery you'll see the first half of that story and 06B hyphen surgery will show you the second half of what is a fascinating story from a from a fascinating man so that work was taken to an next step by Joseph Lister who looked at antiseptics things that could kill germs so Lister had read past his research and realized that it was the infection that was actually uh, killing patients and he used a substance a disinfectant that was actually used to kill the smell of sewage in sewage works the substance of carbolic acid and he started by soaking bandages in this acid and he would drape them around the wound as the surgery was taking place but he then developed a spray a spray that would drench and coat everything in the surgery and everyone in the surgery with a light film of this carbolic acid. And so surgery during this period had this, this light hiss in the background of the carbolic acid being spread around the surgery. This was quite unpleasant for the surgeon and any nurses who would often complain of irritated lungs or irrita irritated skin as a result. But the improvements in, in fatalities and the increase in survival rates as in surgery as a result of this combating of infection were remarkable. We then see another shift. Carbolic spray is what we would call an antiseptic. It was a substance that would kill germs. But surgeons in Germany went the next step and they moved from antiseptic surgery to what we call 
aseptic surgery or asepsis. This is where you try to avoid germs from growing in the surgery as opposed to killing them in antiseptic surgery. Aseptic surgery is about removing or avoiding germs from actually getting there in the first place. So this, this idea of absolute cleanliness in surgery was developed by Professor Neuber and Ernst Bergman and they would pass all of their surgical instruments through a, a, a superheated steam chamber that would kill the germs without the need of harmful chemicals such as carbolic acid. And essentially today's instruments in surgery are, 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 are cleaned in a very, very similar way and are actually pre-packed in sterile containers. So this work has, has influenced how we conduct surgery today. The final development in surgery took place as a result of the work of William S. Halstead. In 1889, his, one of his nurses complained that the, ace, the, that the antiseptic chemicals, the carbolic acid, was har were harming her hands. Now, he had a vested interest in this nurse because he, it was a, his fiancée and he, he ended up actually marrying her. But Halstead asked the Goodyear Rubber Company to make some gloves to protect the, the nurse's hands. But what he actually realized is because these gloves were being taken off and, and, burn, and, and put in the bin after every uh, operation, they were also protecting the patient as well from infection. So he went on to develop masks, caps and gowns, the likes of which we see in modern day surgeries all over the world now. Finally, it's quite a sad story because he later investigated the, uh, the use of cocaine as an anaesthetic and unfortunately became addicted. Uh, so it's quite a sad end to Halstead's story.